Um, I'd like to uh, introduce um, Noel Pearson. And I, uh, before I call him, I'd like to talk a little bit about him. We, uh, we, we call him a different name. A different name from here, which is Kurta. Kurta is an important name. So, Kurta, come forward. of New South Wales to give some introductory background to how we came to Uluru and then I'll speak um, on the statement and how I see our future path ahead and the prospects of us getting the recognition we seek. In 2015, the Referendum Council was tasked with the job of consulting our mob on what meaningful recognition was to them. The Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander members of the Council, Noel and I were two of them, um, Gullaroy was one, Denise participated in, uh, in, in the Council's work. Uh, we took the opportunity to seek advice then from communities via a dialogue process. So we didn't want to run a consultation process, we wanted it to do to be a dialogue process in which communities felt like they were uh, in control of the process. So we ran a structured, deliberative dialogue process and we wa walked a sample of representatives chosen by Indigenous community organisations uh, through a tightly structured, intensive civics program and an assessment of the legal options for reform. Before we commenced, we travelled the country and sought permission first from traditional owners, uh, peak bodies and other Aboriginal leaders in meetings in Broome, Thursday Island and Melbourne. We then engaged the Australian Institute of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Studies, IATSIS, um, to uh, provide the logistical support and support the delegates to attend the dialogues. The First Nations Regional Dialogues were convened in Hobart uh, by the Tasmanian Aboriginal Corporation, in Broome by the Kimberley Land Council, in Dubbo, uh, in Dubbo by the New South Wales Aboriginal Land Council, in Darwin by the Northern Land Council, in Perth by the South West Aboriginal Land and Sea Council, in Sydney by the New South Wales Aboriginal Land Council, in Melbourne by the Federation of Victorian Traditional Owners Corporation, in Cairns by the North Queensland Land Council, in Ross River by the Central Land Council, in Adelaide by the Aboriginal Legal Rights Movement, in Brisbane by a number of local organisations, and on Thursday Island, hosted by the Torres Shire Council, the Torres Strait Regional Authority, and a number of other organisations. A truncated dialogue was hosted by the Ngunnawal Elders Council in Canberra. Finally, a national constitutional convention was held at Uluru, on the 23rd to the 26th of May 2017. This dialogue process is unprecedented in Australia's history. It's the first time a constitutional convention on the national constitution has been convened with and for First Peoples. It's the most proportionately significant consultation process that's ever been undertaken with First Peoples. And it engaged a greater proportion of the relevant population in the Constitutional Convention debates of the 1800s, 
from which First Nations were excluded. A core principle to ensure that the First Nations, uh, the, the cultural authority, formed the core representation to these dialogues meant that each of the dialogues' invitation list was that 60% must be drawn from First Nations or traditional owner groups, 60%. 20% from community organisations and 20% involving key individuals. The dialogue process led to consensus at Uluru. The integrity of the process is evidenced in the consensus at Uluru. And after 14 months, the Parliamentary Joint Select Committee this week endorsed the legitimacy of this process and the outcome. There can be no more committees and no more councils. Voice Treaty Truth. The Uluru Statement from the Heart calls for a constitutionally enshrined voice to the Parliament. A Makarata Commission to supervise and facilitate agreement making and truth telling as a part of the Makarata Commission. The Uluru Statement from the Heart is the statement that we issued uh, at Uluru to the Australian people to help us on that journey.